Hey everybody, Little Jay here from Marshall May Collectibles, and I'm here to remind you that this channel is meant for the mature, sometimes immature, adult collector. That means no kids or children should be listening or watching. Besides, when Jay does these reviews, we don't know what the hell he's gonna say. Hey everybody, it's Jace with Marshall Made Collectibles, and today we have a very cool unboxing and review. Before I get started though, I want to go ahead and give a shout out to our friends over at Time Walker Toys that made this review possible. If you've never shopped with Time Walker uh, before, I will have a link in the description below. They're one of the best collectible dealers, whether it be 1-6 scale collectibles or statues. They have really great prices. If you reach a threshold of over $350, your order can ship for free. They have bulletproof packaging, and they are super, super fast. I got Kier here in uh, less than two days, uh, and they are just fabulous to work with. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. This is Kier. The first Sword of Death. This is a 1-6 scale action figure by TV League in Sideshow. This is their first venture. Now, if you're not familiar, uh, the Court of the Dead is a Sideshow property. Uh, mostly did statues, and the statues were like the premium format. Uh, this is their first foray into 1-6 scale. And TV League and Sideshow are going to be working together on some of their other uh, upcoming uh, properties too. In fact, TV League will be providing the body for uh, Sideshow's new comic version of Wonder Woman. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the shipping box. The shipping box is just brown. Uh, it has all the information about the item number, uh, size, carton number. It says Kier. Uh, first Sword of Death, 1-6 scale action figure. If you turn to the side, it says the TV League logo. It says Sideshow Originals, Court of the Dead. And that is it. That's all you have on the brown shipper. So let's go ahead and crack this open. With the shipper removed, we're left with the art box and her display base, which uh, is encased in foam. So let's go ahead and open this first, and then we'll get to the figure. Okay, and out of the foam, we have the display base, which is pretty spectacular. Uh, just around the bottom edge, you have all these little skulls, and then you have like some sort of like uh, symbol or icon, which looks like another kind of skull, uh, which I take it is the Court of the Dead symbol. I could be wrong. But that goes all the way around the bottom of the base. Then as you come up, you have all these jagged rocks that are jetting out. And then you have more skulls, a jawbone. Looks like some more bone. But it is a beautiful display base. It's polystone. And on the bottom, you have uh, TV League etched in the foam uh, to keep it from like scratching any surfaces. Really has a really nice textured detail to it that uh, kind of almost makes it look like lava rock in a way. Um, I think it's absolutely beautiful. Again, uh, TV League goes all out with these releases, uh, their figures here lately. Uh, you're basically getting a figure and a polystone uh, display base, and the price point is between like 160 and 170 which, again, is unheard of in the 1-6 scale community. Now, I'm um, going to go ahead and move on to the figure. Uh, of course, we have that shrink wrap around it. So I'm going to remove that shrink wrap before we do the 360 on the box. So you're not seeing studio lights. You're actually seeing the box. Okay, and with the shrink wrap off, we are left with a stunningly beautiful art box. Um, first of all, I want to say real quick, I was not... Uh, hugely familiar with the uh, Court of the Dead or the characters. I had seen the statues before. Anybody that's ever perused uh, like Sideshow's website has seen the statues, and they're all gorgeous. Some of them are just downright spooky and scary, and they look fabulous. I just never was familiar with the characters enough to be like, man, I want to plunk down, you know, uh, half of a grand on a character I never heard of, no matter how cool it looked. Uh, but now that you're getting these 1-6 scale figures from TV League, which I'm a huge fan of, and they have this marriage with Sideshow that they're going to start bringing these properties out, 
and they're still keeping that price point that TB League is famous for, uh, I went ahead and dove in uh, full force. With that said, prior to doing this review, I didn't want to come across like a complete dumbass. So I did invest in a couple things just so I could get familiar with the characters. And I got a the, the Shadows of the Underworld graphic novel. And then there is this uh, Court of the Dead, uh, almost like a like an encyclopedia, which almost gives you like a complete history and, and um, all the background that you need. And that's was something that I felt like I needed before I would talk about a figure. So I'm just not talking out of my ass. And uh, with that said, I do know that Kier, and it's pronounced with K with like gear. So it's Kier, the first sword of death. She's actually death's daughter. And uh, the way the underworld works is death runs everything. Um, there's kind of a split fraction between heaven, hell, and the underworld, and uh, death runs the underworld, and there's three factions within the underworld. You have the flesh, you have the bone, and then you have the spirit, and Kier is, happens to be part of the spirit uh, faction, and that's actually all the history I'm going to give on the Court of the Dead. If you're interested, I highly recommend picking up some of the graphic novels. The artwork in them is fabulous. And I, I suggest picking up this, uh, this almost like this encyclopedia. I think originally it had a retail of like 50 bucks, but you can find this now on Amazon for like $22, $21. And it's a fabulous reference. Uh, and it's got all the history behind it. Um, this graphic novel, I think originally was like $30 and you can pick it up for like 13 or 14 off of Evil Bay. Um, really great, uh, story and background to to what you would be collecting and i at least would want to know something about what i was getting into uh with that said let's go ahead and get into the box the box is a beautiful matte black you do have kier for sword of death one six scale action figure sideshow court of the dead and tb league done in a silver foil the kier's uh helmet or headdress whatever you would like to call it plus this circle of spirits that is surrounding it is all done in a high gloss which offsets against that matte black which is simply stunning this is a gorgeous box when you turn to the side Kier for sword of death and you actually have her sword there which is pretty cool you turn to the back you have a picture of the actual figure she's got her sword up behind her shoulders there she's walking through that beautiful base Kier for Sword of Death, 1-6 scale action figure, and then you have all your legalese down below. And then we turn to the side. We just have Kier again for Sword of Death and another image of her sword. Tops and bottoms are blank, but that does it for packaging. Okay, with uh, the magnetic flap off and the first layer of foam removed, uh, we come to our TB League in introduction. And then again... I highly suggest if this is your first TB League figure, take a few seconds, read through the pamphlet. It basically is going to tell you all the uh, articulation joints, and it's going to tell you the limitations of those within the body. You don't want to uh, stress the silicone. You don't want a uh, pose for too long that could cause damage, and you don't want to stretch it to the point that you could cause the body to rip. Although in all the ones I've had, I've had some pretty dynamic poses. I haven't had a, a lick of problems, but... Again, I'm familiar with these now. Uh, I highly suggest if this is your first foray into a TB League figure, read uh, your little pamphlet there. It, it won't take you a minute. Uh, coming to the figure itself, we have everything in here. It looks amazing. I uh, love the way TB packs everything in foam. It just makes you feel like you are definitely getting a high-class collectible. Uh, first thing we're going to come to is it looks like this is her like her neck piece kind of has almost like a bronze metal patina finish it's very cool if you look at the detail on this it almost looks like spider legs and then on the back you've got like an engraved i don't know what that is like a fairy an angel maybe a demon i don't know it looks cool though 
Very cool. I don't think there's nothing else there. And I love this accessory. Uh, if you remember the Vampirella figure, she had a skull that she had a bunch of holes in that you could have her where she was holding that in her hand. Well, we have something similar here, but it's for the opposite hand. But you have the spirit kind of uh, astral kind of effect going on with the skull. And then it's got all the holes in it where you can have it in one of her gripping hands. I will definitely, when I'm posing mine, she will be holding this. I just think that is too cool of an accessory and a visual effect. And I love that they did like a translucent blue, but you can see there are some paint washes in it to give it kind of like that, kind of like a, a smoke effect as well as the blue. And they carry that uh, white kind of... Uh, uh, paint effect on the skull as well. Very nice. Okay. We've got, I think that's, that's her head. Oh, this is her headdress. That thing is too damn cool. You got the jaws that are dangling like earrings almost. It's got that engraving on the forehead. Those horns are something else. Great paint apps. And uh, you can see the inside has got two magnets and that's how it attaches to her head. Which is very cool because that's how the quarter scale statue attaches as well. It's done with magnets. Really lovely work. I mean, that thing is awesome. Uh, let's go to our head sculpt. Wow, she's, she's stunning. I mean, I know she's supposed to be Like uh, the daughter of death, but she's beautifully sculpted and painted. That detail on her face is just awesome. And then her hair is done up in like that braid. Very well painted, very well sculpted. You have these little skull things that are basically holding these all these French braids that are coming down. Their sculpt work is just so damn good. And uh, taking this mask, and that's how it attaches to her. That looks so damn cool. And it's done so gently, you don't have to worry about any kind of like paint scrapes or anything, but it's strong enough that it holds. Just constantly blown away by TB League. Okay, let's take a look at her body. Now, it might throw you because as her arms uh, reach towards her hands and at her feet, they almost go black. That's just the way the character is designed. It's really cool. It's like from blood to, to like, like she's been bathing in it. And she's got some weight. Pale blue body. See the bustier. It's got that, that skull image again. Uh, like her skirt is almost like a, a, it's almost like a white leather. It is. It's like a, a vinyl white color, but it's weathered. You got some torn or tattered fringe on the side. Goes from the blood look 
all the way down to the really, really dark. On her back where her wings were and they were cut off. And the straps are actually molded vinyl, but they look like they're leather. That's so well done. You can even see the intricate detail on the back where the, the other leather flap towards her butt here is. And that's even got sculpted detail in silver. She's stunning. And I take it this fits on like that. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it fits. No, I guess it fits like that. Might need to heat that up and bend it a little bit. All right, let's see what else we have. Moving that out of the way, let's go to the second tray. Okay, she comes with some other feet. These are more of a, a step feet, or like Barbie feet, I guess you would call them. I might use a combination of one or the other. Uh, we have some more hands. Kind of like a grasping hand. Another grasping one. That one almost looks like a spell casting hand. I don't think she, I don't know if she casts spells or not. More of a relaxed hand. Same for the other side. What I like about this is if you're noticing, even though the hands are kind of like a bloodish, almost dark maroon brown, uh, the nails are actually painted black. There is a differential between the color. I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but it's definitely there. Uh, let's see. Looks like leg shin armor. Again, it's got that bronze patina finish. That stuff is so... It, it, they do such a damn good job on that. It's got to be like a series of dry brushings and, and wiping it off. Because like if you've ever seen like antique bronze, the way it patinas, they've got it down. And again, you've got all that sculpting detail that looks almost like spider legs. Or, or maybe it's supposed to be like bone... And then the pitting in there, too. Beautiful work. And then you've got one for the opposite leg. Again, gorgeous work. Uh, we have some sort of little band. I don't know if that's for an arm. That looks like some sort of bracelet. It's got a, a skull with some uh, horns or antlers coming out. It's got to be small enough to go on like a wrist, which would be cool because that will hide like any kind of a wrist joint. Got a uh, armor for... Uh, Forearm, again, done in that patina. It's weird because it looks, it comes across that it's sculpted, but then at the same time you got like that horn or whatever growth coming out of it. So then it goes from looking sculpted or made by a blacksmith to something that almost looks organic. Just... Just knocked out by the stuff that TB League can do. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, shoulder. Upper shoulder armor. Got a clear band so it goes up without it uh, looking, uh, almost making it look invisible. One for the opposite side. That almost has like a horseshoe crab texture to it. And we still have another tray to go through. So you got three to go to. And this one has her cloak, which is weathered to make it look like mud. There's some holes in it here and there. But then the inside looks like it's got a lining there is a bendy wire in it so you can get some posing out of it. Very nicely detailed. Very nicely weathered too. And then we come to her sword. And that is just wild looking. This thing is huge. Like that's the length of the box, and that's the length of the sword. Very nice silver finish. It's got a... It's not just one tone. If you look at it, I don't know if the camera's picking it up. It's kind of speckled. Almost looks like an angel at the top of the scabbard. That is wild. So much detail done into that hilt. Okay, um, that is everything for Kier. Okay, everybody, we're back and we have Kier all set up and she is freaking spectacular. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the turntable while I'm talking about her and give you my final thoughts. Um, did very little to set her up. Uh, I went ahead and put the armor piece on her right arm. Uh, the little bracelet and bangle on her left gave her that skull. Um, these little shoulder pauldrons go up with the little clear bands, and they're actually on snap, so you can snap them off. And wiggle them up uh, makes it a little bit easier to put on. The lower leg armor was, uh, for some reason, increasingly tight. All I did was heat mine up briefly with my heat gun and open them up a little bit to slide them on. I also did the heat gun uh, trick to uh, her neck collar. Just heated it up a little bit, bent it in place, and then uh, cooled it off quickly so it, it, it formed to her neckline. Added the cape up underneath there and it looks stunning. I did give her the, the pointy toes. Um, to get her to pose like this on, on the stand, I do have a, uh, a bendy arm stand going up through uh, the backside of that to keep her steady. That's the one thing I do wish TB League would do, and if you look at the uh, video I did for the pre-order for the Dawn, uh, the Lisner's Dawn figure that's coming out, they're actually going to start putting... Um, the stand arms on these stands, which I'm all for, because that one's going to have like a little waist grabber that comes out at uh, almost like an angle, which I think these figures need because they're they're they have a good balance, they have a good weight, but you do need something to to keep them slightly stable. Um, like now with this, uh, with her, with that stand behind her, she is phenomenal, and there's not a pose that we can't can't achieve. And of course. The mask can come off easy enough that you can set it off to the side if you want to. Anyway, final thoughts. I think she's knocked down, drop dead gorgeous. I think she is a awesome figure. I'm getting some Circe vibe off of her face. I don't know why. Maybe I'm wrong. But uh, maybe whoever sculpted it was uh, 
uh, like binging some Game of Thrones, but I think she's absolutely gorgeous. I think uh, this line is going to be incredible for TB League and Sideshow. I've already got the next one pre-ordered, which is actually her mother, uh, the Queen of Death. Uh, I would like to hopefully they will continue on with this and we'll see some of the male characters too. I'd love to see Death uh, out of this because uh, he's got a really, really cool design if you've not seen him. And like I said, if you're interested in this figure, if you're interested in the line, do a little bit of homework. It, it, it doesn't take much and I think you would be pleasantly surprised at the cast of characters from the Underworld and uh, the Court of the Dead that uh, Sideshow has developed. Hang back, I will have some HD photos here at the end and I'll have her up close and personal and you can see all the detail. She's just stunning. But I wanted to show you something I did real quick. Um, I really, really love the base. I think the sculpt is fantastic. I did notice that the paint apps aren't as fantastic as they are on the back of the box. So I went ahead and did some dry brushing techniques. I just went over it real quick with some brown, did a little black, and then did a little burnt umber here and there, and then went back through and uh, hit it with some uh, um, future floor wax. And I also did a little bit of a black wash on top of that. So it gives it a little bit of a sheen, but it really bought, brought out the, the sculpt on the bone and uh, the little skulls up front, especially even on the rocks, because now it really looks like gravel you can see like kind of like the reflection and the different highlights even on the sculpted rock pieces and it also really highlighted all these little you can see how my hands all the crap that's all over me now um on those all those little brass pieces and all the little skulls there as well i just think it uh just needed something to help it pop because the sculpt is absolutely gorgeous. But prior to that, the skulls here, even like the little jawbone, all that stuff, just kind of like, I don't know, it just seemed kind of single tone. It needed a little bit of something. And if you're uh, decent at a dry brush technique, this probably took me all of like 10, 15 minutes and then hit it with a heat gun real quick, baked it all on. And then I went ahead and hit it with a little clear coat. But uh, completely changed the look of it and uh, love it. I absolutely love it now. And it fits the figure because the figure is just absolutely stunning. Um, anyway. If you're new to our channel, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe and the bell icon. That way, every time I put up a video, you'll uh, be able to be the first to see it. For all our longtime viewers, I thank you for hanging in there. I hope you've uh, appreciated how the channel has grown and some of the improvements that we've done here. And I really couldn't thank all of you enough for tuning in and and uh and being here so again this is jace for marshall made collectibles thank you for watching and take care